Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist. And today I wanted to talk about um, things that annoy me about baking things in Blender and how I try to fix those problems. I'm kind of going to assume if you watch the video that you already know what baking is, but essentially it's the process where you can take a complicated setup with multiple materials or procedural materials or different things like that and save it into a single texture so that um, an asset can or multiple assets can all share a single texture with one material rather than having multiple different materials. If you're just rendering an image in Blender, it's not something you necessarily would ever have to do, um, although it could in some cases make you render faster potentially, or allow you to put more things in your scene, because it can perform better than having lots of, you know, tiling texture maps. You know, if you're not using all of the pixels of some 4K tiling texture map, um, you're still having to load it into memory to render it. So in some cases, baked textures can perform better than big tiling textures, but in general, if you're just rendering an image, you don't need to worry about it. But if you're exporting things to a game engine, or also potentially if you're just making assets to have in an asset library to be able to drag into scenes or stuff, then it might be something worth doing. And definitely for the game engines, it's a key part of the workflow for most, um, for a lot of different assets. Um, so I've been working recently on just making props, um, things to scatter around scenes, tools, um, food items, boxes. You just need a lot of stuff if you want to make a scene looked lived in. So to have them all with separate materials would mean a lot of um, draw calls potentially and stuff. And so rather than having a bunch of materials on all of those, I'd rather bake it all so that they can share a single material. Also, it means that certain things like this wrap on this hammer, it doesn't even need to be in the low poly mesh. Um, because when you're looking at this asset in the game, you're going to be so far away from it that um, you won't be able to tell the difference between the high poly that has the actual geometry for the wrap and the low poly where it's just baked into the texture. So for the example of these tools, which were all baked to a single texture, um, you're probably talking about going from like a dozen different materials down to just one, and they all share it, which is obviously better. However, that's a pain to do in Blender because there's a lot of gripes I have with how baking works in Blender. And the worst part about it is when you're when you're going and you're trying to make things, there on the one hand you're in sort of this creative mindset where you're coming up with ideas and you're trying to model something that you can use in your scene, and then you finish it and you have to switch into this whole like really technical mindset where you're thinking about how the UVs are unwrapped and merging meshes meshes together to reduce the time it takes to bake and making sure the materials have the right and bake settings are all correct and everything. Um, and I found that really frustrating where um, you just want to sort of get in the flow and make a bunch of stuff, but you end up spending half an hour making something cool, and then you spend three hours, or it feels like that sometimes anyway, just getting all technical and nitty-gritty with all these details to actually realize the result you were going for. So my dream scenario is you just work for a while, you make something, it's a creative process, and you click a magic button, and it's an asset that's ready to be exported to the game. And that's essentially what I've managed to make. Um, at least for my use case. I don't know how flexible it would be for other people, but but I'm definitely open to the idea of making this into a, an add-on that's available to people if um, people think it would be useful to them. Anyway, first I just kind of wanted to go through my list of things that bother me about baking and why it's a painfully slow process, and then I want to talk about some of the solutions that I've made to tr solve those problems. Now all of these things by themselves are pretty minor, but when you stack them all together is when it really starts to be a problem. Um, so the first one is just that when you bake a uh, material, you're typically baking at least four, four or five maps. Um, you know, you diffuse your normal roughness, things like that. Um, and you can bake a bunch of those different types by changing the bake type in the bake settings. But um, every time you want to bake a material, you have to go through and manually change each of those settings. So for example, you'd first have to select diffuse, potentially, um, change the settings how you wanted them, and then bake that. And then you'd have to change it to the you know roughness or whatever, and tweak any settings you needed to, and then bake that. So the first thing is just that you're constantly having to change the bake type when you're trying to bake materials. And if you get anything wrong about the bake, um, say something didn't line up quite, quite right, or normals were poking through, then when you realize it, you usually have to go back and rebake all of those maps, changing all of the settings again, and it just feels like you keep doing the same thing over and over again. Another thing that's kind of a pain is like in this example here, where I have, you know, a dozens of different objects that I want to bake into a single texture, um, it will do like one render pass for each object. So the only way to 
bake something quickly is to merge all of these separate meshes into a single mesh, which means that you first have to apply any modifiers and convert any curves to meshes, then select all of them, join them together, or you can create a geometry node setup that does that. Um, but then you have to make, you, but then you usually don't want to apply that to the meshes that you're working on because they want to keep these separate and easy to edit. And if you merge them all together, it becomes impossible to edit anything about them. So you, so you have to first make a duplicate of all of these and then apply all of the modifiers to the duplicates. And for the low poly ones, um, line them up on top of each other, select them in the right order, and then bake it. And that's just, it's just sort of tedious work that's a pain to get right every single time. There's other silly things, just like the fact that when you stack the two, the low poly and the high poly mesh on top of each other, usually I bake selected to active from a high poly mesh to a low poly mesh. Um, when you do that, you have to select them in the right order, because first you have to select the high poly, and then second you have to select the low poly, or you can use the outliner. That's actually the best way to do it. Um, and that's hard to do when the two meshes are on top of each other, which is why you have to use the outliner. <laughs> um, another thing is when you have these multiple meshes, on the low poly ones, if you um, are working on them, you have to make sure, like this wouldn't work because the UVs are overlapping. So you have to select all of the meshes. Every time you change anything about one mesh, you have to select all of the meshes and unwrap them so that the UVs don't overlap. Or you have to pack the, the UV islands so that um, none of them overlap. And to do that, you have to select everything in the, you have to select all of the meshes at once and enter edit mode on all of them to do that. Or um, or otherwise it's just impossible to make sure nothing's make sure that there isn't anything overlapping. And the reason that's really annoying is if you're trying to just work and make things and make creative changes, um, it's a pain that, that every time you have to do that, you have to go back to this technical task of making sure all the UVs are correct. Another thing that's annoying is um, there's certain types of maps that you want to be able to bake that you just can't, like a metallic map. A lot of PBR materials will need a metallic socket, especially if their metal um, and you, for some reason you can't bake that directly from a bake type so the only way to do it or the way I'd recommend doing it anyway is baking it as an emit but that means you have to connect the metallic texture to the output of the to the surface of the material output or run it through an emission shader the reason that's a huge pain is now if I want to go and bake a diffuse texture say then um, and I try to bake it I would get the metallic texture as a diffuse texture, which means that when you want to switch and do that, you have to reconnect your shader to the output for every single material that you're trying to bake from. And in this case, I have literally dozens of materials. So that would mean for every bake I wanted to do, I would have to edit those dozen materials for each type of map I wanted to bake. And you want to make four or five maps per material typically. So that's never going to work. Another thing that's annoying is that you can't actually bake an accurate diffuse texture, just the base color of your material, unless that material has a roughness of 1. Because as soon as you change the roughness, if you have like a principled shader in here, as soon as you change the roughness lower than 1, some of the color gets put taken out of the diffuse bake type and put in the glossy bake type. And the only way to get an accurate result would be to like add the two together. So if any of you have ever baked something and it turns out darker than the original texture, that's why. It's because when you bake diffuse, it actually puts some of the color, however much, whatever percentage of it is, you know, glossy, I guess, in this glossy bake type and not in the diffuse bake type. Which means the only way to accurately bake the base color or the diffuse texture is again with the emit and connecting the, uh, you know, your base color texture to the output, directly to the output. Then on top of that, if you have a material on your target mesh that you're baking to, you have to add an image to that that's your bake texture. And this isn't such a big problem when you're baking high poly to low poly, because usually the low poly doesn't really have materials on it. Um, it just has a, a baker material or something. So that's fine. But if you're ever baking like on a multi-res model and you're baking directly from that mesh to the UVs and then you're going to you know delete the multi-res for the, to have that be your low poly, which I do on like characters say, then in that case, um, you're baking usually from the, you have to put the image that you're baking, your bake target image node in all of the actual materials that you are providing the color to. However, when you bake, the target of the bake will be the actively selected image node. So if you had two of these, right now this one would be the one that the bake would go to. 
Whereas if I click on this one, then it's going to go to this one, which means if you forget and you ever edit a material and then click on, a, you know, your base color or your, or your metallic image map or something like that and leave it active, when you do your bake, you actually override your texture that's supposed to be providing some information to the material. And then the only way to recover from that is to either reload the image or restart Blender so that it forgets the that bake that was in memory. And if you ever click close and it's like you have five unsaved images and you click save, then you just replaced your uh, actual texture with some bake that you didn't want probably. Another problem is that when you actually bake the image, um, it bakes to whatever image you have selected in your material. And that ends up just in the image editor in memory, which means you have to then go in there and save that image as a texture somewhere on your hard drive, which means you have to name this, you know, like example base color. You might have to choose a type of image if you want to save it as a particular type or make sure to remember to change that in the render settings. And you have to do that for every texture you bake, um, which adds up very quickly to take up a lot of time. So that's most of the problems I found with baking in Blender. Um, another thing that's annoying about it is it can't render transparent materials. Um, any transparent part of material just becomes black. So that's kind of annoying because you can't do like decals, but um, I don't have a solution to that problem. Anyway, the other thing that's just kind of a pain about all that is it's way too much information to have to know, but just sort of arbitrary things. And even if you know all of that, the chance that you forget a bit of it or do some part, forget a step, you know, or do some part wrong is really high. Just too many things to keep track of. When what you're really trying to do is just make a hammer, you know, all I want to do is make a hammer. It takes five minutes to model this and then however long it takes to getting all of these technical details right. So that was the problem. Um, honestly, it's not great. I feel like there could be a lot of improvements to baking in Blender. That is actually something that um, Blender is aware of. It's a task to be done at some point um, is to make improvements to the baking system. So hopefully that will happen eventually. But I believe when you find these problems like this that are just a pain in your workflow, something that really bothers you, um, that's when you have an opportunity to make something that's really cool and addresses those issues and ends up being a very useful tool. So. I feel like I've been working on this for a long time and it keeps getting better. And this latest version is my favorite yet. So I want to show sort of how I addressed all of those issues I mentioned, because I think I addressed all of them except the transparent problem, which I don't think there's a way to solve right now. So let's go take a look over here. So the first thing I did was to um, automate the saving. I just wanted to be able to bake a texture and have it save somewhere. So the way that works is you, you give it a path where you want to save the textures. And then um, initially you could just click bake and it would ask you what type of thing you wanted to bake. So you'd pick what type of texture you wanted to bake and it would create a name for the image based off of the object's name uh, with an appended suffix of the type of map that it was. So that was pretty cool and helped with saving the files. But then I wanted to take that a bit further and I was like it would be nice if this could also if you could if you didn't have to set the material up ahead of time if you could just click this bake texture button and it would be able to automatically reconfigure all of your materials to bake whatever type of map you wanted to make. So I did that. So you can see if we preview on this, the roughness, it will edit the material, connect this float curve that goes into the roughness to the material output, and it would change. Um, and then if you baked that, it would change the bake type to emit automatically. So that helps with the problem of having to edit the settings every time and um, having to edit so many materials and worry about all of that. Then I also wanted a way for it to automatically select the correct bake target. Um, and the way I did that was if you have an image node and you give it a label of bake, then it will search your the node graph of all of your different materials for the image texture with the bake label and it will select that before doing the bake. And that way you don't have to worry about baking over your diffuse texture or something because it was happened to be selected from some last edit that you made. So that was kind of where I'd gotten to when I made the last video about where I baked some textures for furniture. But then I realized that I kept doing the same thing over and over. And essentially what I would do is I'd add a geometry node step that would clone a collection. And then I'd make edit to the and then I'd make edits to the meshes in the collection. And then when I wanted to do the bake, I would copy the object with the geometry node setup that would clone the collection and make a copy of that. I'd apply the modifier, do the bake, and then uh, if I wanted to make changes, I'd have to delete that, make the changes duplicate it, apply the modifier, do the bake. 
And I just kept doing that over and over again. So then I came up with a new idea. I was like, what if you could automate all of that managing of the geometry as well as the settings and editing the materials and saving the image? So I came up with this operator that would, will essentially clone the high poly and low poly collections, convert them to a mesh, move them out of the way, select them in the right order, then do the bake. Um, and then to take it even a step further, I had it not only bake the one texture, but I had it bake all of the five textures you typically want with the PBR setup. And then also at the same time, you can have it then delete the high poly clone, um, create a new material on the low poly clone and load all of the images that just baked into that material. So just to show how that works here, all you have to do is have a high poly and low poly collection. So this object here is in the cutlery low poly and this object here is in the cutlery high poly. They have the same name and then the operator identifies the paired collection by looking for a collection with the same name but the underscore low poly or underscore high poly um, suffix. So then all you have to do is you choose a bake resolution so we can make this low so it goes faster and then you click baked asset it will start doing a bunch of work so it's just bake the base color now it's going to bake the ambient occlusion now it's baking the metallic you can see it edited all the materials now it's baking the roughness and then finally it's going to bake the normal map. And then that's complete. It loads all the images. We get our clone collection with a baked texture on it that should look pretty much indistinguishable from the high poly version over here. But this is a low poly. The geometry of this is the same as the low poly. So that's what I've been working on this last week, and I feel like it's going pretty well. I was able to make all of these assets way faster than I have in the past. Oh, the other thing it does that I didn't mention is it will, all you have to do is make sure that the low poly mesh has a valid UV layout. It will also pack all of the UVs of every object in the collection into a single UV space before doing the bake. Um, so you just have to make sure that the low poly has a valid UV unwrap, and then it will scale them all to be, um, Share, have the same texel density and not overlap. So you don't have to worry about UV so much. I mean, you do, but you don't. From here, the only thing that you do have to do is um, it merges everything into a single mesh, so you have to split it apart. But usually that's just a matter of doing separate by loose parts and then applying the origin to the geometry, and then you might have to merge some things back together. And then you have to name everything. But that's a lot easier and less tedious than all of the fiddling you have to do with the bake settings. Anyway, hopefully that was interesting. Um, I'd be curious to know what people think about it, um, if people think they would be able to use it in their workflows, or if you don't ever bake anything, you only render things to an image. Um, because if people are interested in it, I could try to tidy it up and add a few more settings and things to make it easier to use and release it as an add-on. Um, but anyway, I really just wanted to show sort of some of what I was working on so I think it's pretty cool. Um, other than that, a week ago I made a website. It has all of my nodes and things on there. If you haven't seen those, check them out. Um, my nodes, my geometry node setups are available on Gumroad and Blender Market, as well as some other add-ons and random blend files on Gumroad. So check those out if you haven't. Um, other than that, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.